Someone and someone and someone, guys. Um, if I look like trash, I feel like trash. Just didn't sleep well. Um, so I'm thinking that today just be a Q&A or me answering the Q&As that uh, I posted on my Instagram uh, story. So I'm just going to try and just touch on certain topics. Some topics are deep. I've unpacked them before in other in other videos. Um, some a little bit tongue-in-cheek, but I'll just jump at all of them. So the first one that came, it says, um, can you talk about your journey in sales and any advice, lessons you've learned from it? Um, so just quickly, thank you so much for that question. So for those that don't know me, I was a teacher for a decade, for 10 years, you know. So again, what I learned from teaching is patience. What I learned from teaching is that I need to first become the student before I can become the teacher. So I've taken those principles into um, my sales life, you know, with my students, I know that my students performed well if we engaged, if I liked them, if they liked me back, if I understood their needs as students, you know, because they're different. Some tend to be more um, visual learners, some audio, whatever the cases may be. So I understood my students because they were their clients and I sold to their needs. So again, in um, the sales journey that I'm in, it's understanding your client, listening attentively, learning about the products and then selling those products to them. You know, because you're there as a um, offering a solution rather you know, um, to the problem that they may have. So that's uh, my learnings from uh, from being in sales. Okay, let's go quickly. Next question. So next question: What what's the best way to put out a grease fire? Um, to be honest, I do not know how to put off a grease fire, but Google does. So I went over to my friend Google, and it said you need to switch off the oxygen so that the fire can't uh, carry on without oxygen. Another way is pouring baking soda on top of it. So if you ever are stuck and have a grease fire, those are the two ways um, that you can uh, <laughs> put it out. <laughs> those are the tongue-in-cheek ones that I was talking about. Um, the next one is, are you natty or not? So natty means natural. So he's saying natty or not as an am I on steroids? So first and foremost, that to me is the biggest compliment. Whenever someone says I'm on steroids, I just go, oh, thank you so much. I think I drink too much. So first and foremost, I'm, I'm scared of needles. I know I've got so many tattoos. So one, I'm scared of needles, all right? One. Two, I drink too much. I, I, I know it's a bad thing, but I drink. And if you're on steroids, you can't drink. And then three is I heard if you're on steroids, your testicles <laughs> get small. And I still want to have a lot of kids, you know, so... If maybe I was done with my kids and I was like, okay, I've got enough kids and I don't need my testicles, I guess, or whatever, ah, then I'll start chovering. But for now, uh, I am natty or natural. Thank you for that question and for the compliment. All right. So what's the future of your podcast? What plans do you have? So again, for me, the way that I view this, I view this as a vlog. So this is a way for me to offload a lot of the, um, my thoughts, you know, it's just me talking to a camera because Nami, I have certain thoughts, good, bad and everything in between. And I just like uh, a way to just open up and engage and, and just tell you guys how I feel. Um, we are busy recording something for a podcast where we like a panel. Um, we've done a couple of episodes, but we're waiting to get about 10 before we drop. So once we drop with that, ah, it's over. But this, this to me is just my own little vlog that I have. So yeah, those are my plans. There's something cooking in the background and then I'll just continue with this as it is. Excuse me. Do you have the answers on how to run the country sway? Yes, I've got the answers. Yes, I've got the answers. You know, so this country, the biggest problem is that um, people get into politics for the wrong reasons. You know, everyone that I know, you might know them differently. Everybody that I know that gets into politics is either trying to get into tenders or they are power hungry and trying to uh, push their own personal uh, ambitions. Me personally, I have never heard a person who gets into politics to help. You know, I've never heard a person who says, I'd like to get into politics because I really think my community needs assistance, blah, blah, blah. I've never heard that. So I really think we need to relook at our whole political system. Um, the GNU is a system that is close to the one that I want. A system that I think would be best is like a system like the Springboks, where it doesn't matter what club you play for, meaning it doesn't matter what political party you belong to. 
we as the pe as the people of this country we get to vote in who we want in certain things i know we're all excited about gaten mckenzie being uh, arts and culture minister of arts and culture but if we had a chance to vote for the minister of police i think us as south africans would have voted him in there you know so again i want a situation where we can vote for each minister knowing who, like their strengths and their background so i don't care what political party you come from but if i know that you're very strong in terms of being able to manage a financial department i want you to be the minister of, of finance i don't want the president just throwing people wherever he thinks it no 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 you know because again you see all oh, ng who going from education so peter must switch up mk first and foremost you didn't know fuck all about education now you, you're gonna be come on so that to us is just a joke so i think we need a, a total overhaul of this system i don't believe that the politicians we have Nabo Koko, Nabo Mkula, doing a great job uh, but then at the same time all these young and coming uh, alliance uh, male and female what do they do they go into uh, the corporate space and just try and make money so really people aren't really caring as much so if we can do an overhaul and understand what politics is and understand why we need a strong country but i can speak for an hour on this topic let me just that's just touch touch uh da, 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 da. when are you getting married who when are you getting married who's this that's asking me naughty naughty natalie okay um again i don't really believe in marriage well the way that has been uh we've been sold marriage so first and foremost i don't want the government coming into my life really the government can't fucking fix potholes now they want uh, to have a say in my life you know so i don't believe in that um i don't believe in the institute i'm not christian so i don't believe in that religious part um i don't believe in ilobola well the way that it's done in 2024 or in modern times so the whole concept of marriage for me is very different i believe in having a partner that you love and you're committing you build a beautiful family and you guys start businesses and you guys look after each other so i believe in that and that's what i'm trying to do you know but in terms of oksana um personally i don't see the big uh, hoo ha on oksana no so getting married uh okay the next question love as a mental illness is a concept adopt adopted by trauma um Wesngisi. Love is a choice. Reactionaries. What are trauma reactionaries? Well, I can answer the first part as love is a mental illness. I truly believe that. Um, I I look at what like how relationships are and what we call love, and when we fall out of love, how selfish we become. When you see your partner texting another person. Um, and how that feels mentally you shut down you know you your whole day can be ruined because you read the wrong message or you saw someone liking something Lo love makes you do a lot of fucked up shit we, we we've seen right now on the twitter streets what's been happening with all michael you know leroy we've seen tons and tons of these stories you in your personal life got to shine now to how you psycho nana just because of listening to zotando so love to me is definitely definitely a mental illness um love hate all these emotions that put you on an emotional roller coaster um, are extremely dangerous extremely extremely dangerous um i don't think it's a choice because sometimes you find yourself sometimes you try to think with i want to let us change hit and run it's okay no it was fun let me go back again okay it was it was let me go back by the time you look up i'll say my time doing bambi love so i don't know if it's a choice i i don't think it's a choice i think you find yourself deep 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 in love um probably unrelated to you but i'd like to hear your opinion is it possible for a gent born in a single mother household to ultimately come out as a well-rounded man masculine and on his mission um can the void uh, be filled along his own hero's journey through life so essentially born of a single mother household can you become a well-rounded man of course you can there are many many well-rounded men that come from orphanage gana mama gana baba um that come from single father houses that comes from single mother household i think for me a big one is just 
who you surround yourself with um, and what you consume in terms of your mental and emotional and psychological diet. You know, um, we've been told what masculinity looks like. Um, we've been told what uh, being a real man is. And maybe those were models of 1970. So you need to relook at what masculinity means for you and your society. I still believe on the principles of being able to provide and protect for yourself and the ones that you love. Those are the principles that I hold on by. You know, um, I was asked a question in a in the Journey WhatsApp group. You know, so we've got a WhatsApp group. Oh, let me try and make this smaller. Um, and I think it links very well with this question around being a man. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. So I'm trying to link these questions because he was asking me about um, being beta, being alpha, being sigma males, you know, all of these things. Um, and what I said, Uguti, just again, being alpha or talking about manliness, I said it's subjective and it works in two planes, you know, two planes of existence. So for me, how you view yourself, you know, how you view yourself. I mean, again, the way that I view, because Baning about they will look at me and say, you're pencil, you're soft, you're and he does his nails, got a nose ring. That's fine. How I look myself at myself is the first thing. I know, you know, when it comes to physical, I'm fucking strong. I mean, I'm shy, boy. No joke. If I was shy, fucking laugh. Either way, my bank account is very healthy. So physical, my bank account is healthy. Yeah, I'm equally to show, but my bank account is very healthy. You know, I, I, I know that. You know, psychologically, yeah, I'm working on myself. I've got also traumas and triggers. guys. Spiritually and morally, the fourth one is is there. Yes, I fucked up. So I think I've also in a back in the past that I'm trying to get one off my back. And then uh la, 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 la. and then mentally, you know, I make sure the what I consume on social media, what I consume on TV, on YouTube, the people I keep around keep me very, very mentally strong mental diet is so important to me so a lot of people watch a lot of rubbish on on tv on their tiktok that pollutes the mind already melania says that i'm weak you know so if i'm on a journey of becoming that well-rounded strong man why am i surrounding myself with all these things that are going to make me weak so give me that's very very important so it is very much possible guys it's very much possible so that was the first plane the second plane is how society views you how your society views you you know if you are a if you work for Google, being a nerd there, that may make you alpha. If you are in the UFC, maybe fighting will make you alpha. So be very cognizant of the environment that you're in and then see because there'll always be a hierarchy where you put yourself and always do the things that will put you at the top of the hierarchy so that you can be as best of a man that you can be. But it's so possible to be well-rounded. Guys, and Bonga, for all these questions that you guys have asked me, please keep them coming. Send me the DMs. I know sometimes it takes a bit longer than others, but I keep trying, I keep trying, I keep trying. Um, I know I've been told before what I need to keep these videos under 10 minutes and I know I've already gone over. But guys, in Gantanda, I've got a lot to say. Please comment below. I'll try and get to all the comments that I can. Please share this video if you see any value in it. Subscribe, hit the notification bell. Have yourselves a fantastic day. Sure.